4.1 goes over exponential functions. With these exponential functions, you're going to be looking at functions in the form of f of x is equal to a to the power of x. So that x is a power that you're going to have to apply to a whole number um, in order to get what your y values are for these functions. Your a has to be greater than 1. Okay, or sorry, it has to be 1 or greater. It tells you that a cannot equal 1. The reason why is because anything to the, the power that's attached to the, so, so I'm sorry, 1 to any power is always going to equal 1. So with that, you got to keep that in mind. Um, it tells you that we assume that a is not equal to 1 because the function 1 to the power of x is always going to be 1. All right. When we look at these, you have something called a base. That number that's being raised to the power is your base. So like in f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x, the base is 2. In g of x is equal to 3 to the power of x, your base is 3. In h of x is equal to 10 to the power of x, your base is 10. You can evaluate these functions given f of something by plugging in that something for the x value. With these, you will be able to use a calculator um, for something like example A. Yes, it's a larger number. For example B, your calculator is not necessarily going to help you out. Okay. Um, if we look at example A, we have f of 5. Our f of x is x is 3 to the power of x. So if f of x is 3 to the power of x, for example, a, we're doing f of 5. This is going to give us 3 to the power of 5. So if you want to write it out, that's going to be 3 times itself 5 times. Again, if you want to use your calculator, you can. You get that f of 5 is equal to 243. For B, we are doing F of negative 2 thirds. So this means that we're going to have 3 to the power of negative 2 thirds. Remember, we cannot have a negative power, so we're going to take the reciprocal of the term that is attached to in order to turn that power into a positive. So this is going to be F of negative two-thirds is equal to one over three to the power of two-thirds. So we took the reciprocal of three, that's one over three, and that three is still being raised to the power of two-thirds, but now it's positive. Rational, frac or rational um, exponent. Your numerator is the power, denominator is the index. So this is telling you f of negative two-thirds is equal to 1 over the cube root of 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, so this is the same thing as saying f of negative 2 thirds is equal to 1 over the cube root of 9. You cannot take the cube root of 9, but you have to rationalize your denominator, which means you cannot have a radical in the denominator. So we are going to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, the bottom, we're going to multiply enough times to get rid of the radical. So we need 3 in total since our index is 3. We added 2 to multiply to the bottom, so we're going to do the same to the top. So we'll multiply the top by 3, or sorry, by the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9. The cube root of 9 times the cube root of 9 times 1 is the cube root of 81. So f to the negative, or f of negative 2 thirds is equal to the cube root of 81 over the cube root of 9 cubed. If your root and your power are the same, they cancel out. So the only thing you have left is your 9 on the bottom. However, on the top, that 81 is 9 and 9. 9 is 3 and 3. If we're looking for a group of 3, this is going to leave us with 3 cube root 3. We can still simplify here because the 3 and the 9 have a common factor of 3. So that's going to be f of negative 2 thirds is equal to the cube root of 3 over 3. So ones like this that you have to rationalize your denominator take a little bit longer. But again, it's something you already know how to do, so it should be pretty simple. 
For example, C, we have f of pi. So for this one, we're going to have f of pi is equal to 3 to the power of pi. 3 to the power of pi, we're going to use our calculator and just do 3 to the power of pi. We get 31.5442807. We're going to round this to the, th um, the nearest thousandths. So this is going to be f to the, oh, I'm sorry, f of pi is equal to 31 point, here, I'll write it out, 2807, we're going to round to the nearest thousandths, so it's going to be this 4, so it's going to be f of pi is equal to 31.544. And then for example D, we have f of the square root of 2. So it's going to be 3 to the power of the square root of 2. Remember, that's the same thing as saying 3 to the 1 half power, or the, sorry, the 2 to the power of 1 half. So the same thing. We can use our calculator for this. So it's 3 to the power of the square root of 2, which gives us, oops. Four point seven two eight eight zero four three eight eight. If we're rounding to the nearest thousandths, this eight is going to turn into a nine. So that's f of the square root of two is equal to four point seven two nine. When we graph these functions, it is a lot easier to give ourselves or to make ourselves a function table, which means if we are given something like f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x, we can do x, we can do y, we plug in values for x, let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. For, this is going to give us 3 to the power of negative 2, 3 to the power of negative 1, 3 to the power of 0, 3 to the first power, and 3 to the second power. So this 3 to the negative 2, you are going to have 1 over 9. 3 to the negative first is 1 third. 3 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. 3 to the first power is 3. And 3 to the second power is 9. So when you go to graph these, you're going to have the ordered pair negative 2, 1 ninth. So it's going to be really close to that x-axis. Then negative 1, 1 third. Up a little bit. 0, 1. 1, 3, and 2, 9. From there, you just draw your line through those ordered pairs, making sure that you treat that x-axis, for this one at least, as an asymptote, so that line's not going to cross over that x-axis. For example, B, we're given g of x is equal to 1 third to the power of x. So again, we're just going to make ourselves a function table. So we have x, we have y, our function is g of x is equal to 1 third to the power of x. So again, I'm going to just do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Plug these values in, so we're going to do negative, or sorry, 1 third to the power of negative 2, 1 third to the power of negative 1, 1 third to the power of 0, 1 third to the first power, and one-third to the second power. So for that one-third to the power of negative two, take the reciprocal. It gives you three to the second power. That's nine. If we have that negative one, one-third to the negative one, take the reciprocal. That's just three to the first power, which is three. Then we have negative, I'm sorry, one-third to the power of zero, which is just one, because anything to the power of zero is one. One-third to the first power is one-third. And two to the, I'm sorry, one third to the second power is one ninth. So to graph these, we have negative two nine, so that's going to be here. Negative one three is here. Zero one is here. One one third is about here, and then two one ninth gets even closer. So again, you're going to have an asymptote for this one. That's that x-axis, and that line will go up as it goes to the left through these points. If we look at our next slide here, 
It tells you that figure 2 shows the graphs of the family of exponential functions f of x is equal to a to the power of x for various values of the base a. You'll see with all of these, the same colored line has the same a value and its reciprocal. So like that red line on each side, your a is 1 half and your a is 2. So they're reciprocals of each other. You'll see the reflection there. That's what they want, they're wanting you to see. Another thing that they want you to see here with this is that when your x is 0, every single one of these graphs goes through the ordered pair 0, 1. You're also looking at a couple of different things with this as well. When you look at these graphs, you have a domain and a range just like you do with every other function. If you look at these graphs, regardless of the type of graph you're looking at, so y is equal to 1 half to the power of x, y is equal to 1 third to the power of x, any of these, your domain is automatically all real numbers. It continues to go to the left to negative infinity, it continues to go to the right to positive infinity. For your range though, you have asymptotes with these, which means it does not pass, it, go, it does not go past a certain y value. So it either doesn't go below a certain y value or it doesn't go above a certain y value. So with that, you're going to have to take that into consideration with your ranges if it asks you for your range. So if it asks you for your domain, automatically you put all real numbers. For your range though, like with all of these, they do not pass the x-axis. So all of them have a range of y is greater than zero because the line stays above the y-axis. So with that, think about interval notation from negative infinity to zero with a union of zero to positive infinity. Okay. With these graphs of exponential functions, you can figure out, this is all the same exact thing, you can figure out your function based off of the ordered pairs that go, that, that, that the line go through. So if we look at example three, we're identifying the graph of each of these exponential functions. We know it's an exponential function because the way that the line looks. With these, your A value is what you're finding when you're given these ordered pairs. Think about f of x is equal to A to the power of x. This two in this ordered pair is your x. This 25 is your y. y is the same thing as f of x. y is the same thing as f of x. So if we plug these values in and solve for a, we can write the function for this exponential function. So f of x, which is y, is 25, is equal to a, we don't know what that is, that's what we need to find, to the power of x, which is 2. So if we have a to the power of x is equal to 25, we got to find what a is. So take the square root of both sides. It cancels out the power to where you just have a. And the square root of the 25 is plus or minus 5. This is going to be a positive 5 that we work with. So we're going to give f of x is equal to 5 to the power of x. Check your answer. If we plug in 2 for x and raise 5 to the second power, does it give us 25 for our y value? It does, so we know for sure that that f of x is equal to 5x is the function for this graph. For our second graph on this page, we are given the ordered pair 3 comma 1 eighth. So that 3 is our x that 1 eighth is our y, which is the same thing as f of x. Remember what our function rule is. f of x is equal to a to the power of x. We have f of x, it's 1 eighth, so plug that in. We have x, so raise a to the power of 3. If a is raised to the third power, in order to get it to be a instead of a to the third power, we're going to take the cube root of each side. The cube root cancels out the power of, a, of the a to just give us a. The cube root of 1 eighth is 1 half.
So if a is equal to 1 half, we're going to write f of x is equal to 1 half to the power of x. And whenever you have a fraction raised to the power of x or raised to a power, you're going to put parentheses around that fraction. When you look at these two graphs, you can tell whether or not you have a growth or a decay. If you're reading these graphs from left to right like you read a book or a sentence, and the graph or the line on the graph is going up, then you have a growth. So like with this example A, you have a growth there. If you're looking at the graph from left to right and the line's going down, you have a decay like you do in example B. Okay, so example A, you have a growth. Example B, you have a decay. With your next example, example five, it just is asking you to compare exponential and power functions. Your power functions and your exponential functions differ because of where that x is. When you have f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x, that's an exponential function because the exponent is the, pow is the, the, um, the x value. If you look at g of x, you have a power function in the form of x squared. So with that, you're just comparing these two. You can use the slope formula in order to do so. We're not going to focus majority on this. Just you know, need to know the difference between the two of whether or not it's an exponential function or a power function. Exponential function, the variable is your exponent. Power functions, the variable is, is like your a. Okay. With your last example within your notes, you're working with interest, compound interest. It tells you that your compound interest formula is A of T, which is whatever you're ending with, is equal to your principal times 1 plus your rate over N to the power of R times T. With this, your P is your principal, it's your starting amount. Your R is your interest rate per year. Now that R is going to be given to you as a percent you are going to turn that percent into a decimal and use that. Your n is the number of times it, that interest is compounded per year. So if it's annually, biannually, that kind of thing. Um, you said RT, but it's n t. Sorry, n times t. N yes, times I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and then your t is your number in years. So for example, if they give you a half a year or six months, it's only half of a year. So it wouldn't be six is equal to your t, your t would be one half because six months out of one year is a half a year. Can you, use point five instead of one? you can use point 0.5 instead of one half. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, you can turn them into decimals. It's not a problem. Um, so with these, your calculator is going to be a huge help with them, um, specifically because as long as you write down the formula for what you're finding, you can just plug it into your calculator and go from there. If we look at example six, it tells us that a sum of $1,000 is invested at an annual rate of 12% per year. Find the amounts that it in the account after three years if interest is compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, and daily. So remember, our formula we have is A of T is equal to our principal times 1 plus our rate divided by n to the power of n times t. When we look at this table that they give us, it gives us our n value based off of the compounding part. So annual is 1. Semi-annual it means it occurs twice a year. Quarterly, there's four quarters in a year. Monthly, there's 12 months in a year. And daily, there's 365 days in a year. Using this, that 1,000 is going to be our P. We have a rate of 12%. So as a decimal, that's 0 0.12. Our rate, we have, our N is the next part that we have, which is in this table. And our T is 3. So if we plug these in, we're going to have for annual 1,000 times 1 plus our rate, which is 0 0.12 over n, which is 1, to the power of n, which is 1, times t, which is 3. Plug this into your calculator correctly and solve it. 
When you plug this into your calculator, you can hit the 1,000, use your parentheses, 1 plus, you're going to have to hit another set of parentheses because you're going to be dividing. That division ha is inside the parentheses, so it's like you have two parts inside there. So that 1 point, or is that 0 0.12 divided by 1 is just 0 0.12. You can hit your enter button from there and then raise your answer to the power of 1 times 3, which is just 3. When you do this, 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.12 to the power of 1 times 3, which is 3. Hold on. It'd be good if I do this the right way. There we go. We get $1,404.50. Or 93 cents. You're rounding this to the nearest cent. Your calculator should give you 928 in your decimal, so it's going to be 93 cents. If you're dealing with money, make sure you put that money sign as well. For a semi annual, you're just changing out that n to be 2. So you have 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 2 to the power of 2 times 3. So it's in our calculator, 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 2, all raised to the power of 6, gives us $1,418.52. For quarterly, again, we're just changing N to be 4. So we have 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 4 raised to the power of 4 times 3. In our calculator, 1,000 times 1 plus... That's your principal. Yeah, yeah your, your principal is that starting amount. So if you invest the $1,000, that's what you're using for P. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's your investment number. All right, so 1,000 times 1 plus 0.12 divided by 4 to the power of 12 gives us $1,425.76. For monthly, we're going to do 1,000 times 1 plus 0.12 divided by 12. I'll raise to the power of 12 times 3. So using our calculator, we get $1,430.77. For daily, our N becomes 365, so it's 1,000 plus 0 0.12 divided by 365 to the power of 365 times 3. So 1,000 times 1 plus 0.12 divided by 365 to the power of 365 times 3. Oops. Hold on. gives us $1,433.24. So again, it's just using this formula, plugging in your values and using your calculator to simplify. Again, when you use your calculator to simplify these, please make sure that you are plugging these values in correctly so that way you're not ending with the wrong number.